I'd like to show you how you can control the quality of your ray trace shadows in Maya. I'll show you some of the settings you can use to control the softness of your shadow edges as well as reduce the graininess you may experience when you're working with ray trace shadows. So I've got a simple scene set up here in Maya. I've got a ground plane and I've got a couple of spheres here that'll cast shadows and I've got a spotlight that I'll use to create my ray trace shadows. In order to start working with ray trace shadows, you have to make sure that ray tracing is enabled in your software. So right now I'm using a Maya software. And if I come over to the Maya software tab and scroll down to ray trace quality, I want to make sure that ray tracing is enabled. And then you can come up here to your quality settings as well and set that to production quality. Now that we have ray tracing enabled, I can close out my render settings and I will render a test frame to show you what this looks like. So in this image, you can see that ray tracing is enabled because I'm getting reflections in the surface and reflections in the spheres, but I have no shadows because I haven't turned on ray trace shadows yet. So I'm gonna go back to Maya. I'm going to double click the spotlight to open it up in the attribute editor, and then I'll scroll down to the shadows section for that spotlight and open that up. And I'm going to go down to the ray trace shadow attributes and turn that on to enable ray trace shadows. Now that I've turned that on, I can render another image and see what that looks like. So now we have shadows enabled in our scene, but they don't look particularly realistic because they've got such a sharp edge on the shadow. So what we want to do is to start to soften that edge to try to get a little bit more realism in our renders. So I can close this out and come back to my attribute editor. Again, I'll double click the spotlight. And what we want to do is increase the light radius. The light radius controls the size of the location where the light is being emitted from. So right now, if I look at my spotlight, that light is being emitted from this single point in space. And because the light is being emitted from a single point in space, that's why we're getting these sharp edges on our shadows. In order to soften those shadows, we would like to have the light emitted from a surface area. And the radius of that surface area is controlled by the light radius. So if I come in here and type the number 2, that is creating a larger surface area that the light is being emitted from. So just as a way of visualizing that, I've created this NURBS circle here. And if I look at the attributes of that, currently its scale is set to 0. If I set the scale to 2, that's a visual representation of the size of the area that the light is now being emitted from. That's just a simple way of visualizing what you're actually doing when you change the light radius of the spotlight back here in the attribute editor. Now that we've set that up to emit light from a larger surface area, let's render that frame again and see what that looks like. And you can see we're getting a little bit of softness here on the edges of our ray trace shadows, but I'd like to make that even softer. So I'm going to come back here to the uh, attribute editor of the spotlight and crank that up to 10. And now I'll render another frame of that to see what that looks like. And now you can see we're getting a much softer shadow edge here on our ray trace shadows. The next thing we want to address is this graininess or the amount of noise that we've introduced by increasing the radius of that light. And the way we can control that is by increasing the number of samples or the number of rays that we're casting to calculate those shadows. So I'll close this render view and go back to my attribute editor for that light and I want to increase the shadow rays. So I'll change that from a setting of 1 to a setting of 4 and I'll render that frame again so we can see the difference. And what you notice here is that the amount of graininess has been reduced because we increased the number of samples or the number of rays. But if I zoom in on that, you can still see that there's some noise and some grain still in that shadow area, so I can go even further with that. So I'll keep this image in our render buffer just for comparison, and I'll come back here and increase the shadow rays to 15, and render that frame again. And immediately you notice that those ray trace shadow edges are much softer, much smoother now. If I zoom in on that, you can see that there may be a little bit of grain in there, but that's probably an acceptable level uh, for production quality. The other thing you should notice is that the amount of render time has increased because we changed that. So if I switch back and forth, the previous version with four samples only took six seconds to render, and we're getting a little bit of noise in there. But the higher quality setting with 15 shadow rays is taking uh, 11 seconds, almost twice as long to render. So that's the trade-off. When you increase your shadow rays, you get a higher quality shadow edge, but you also increase your render time. 
The next setting I'll show you in the ray trace shadow attributes is the ray depth limit. By default that comes in as three, but if I set that down to one, and I'm gonna turn on a shadow casting object here in my scene, I just put on this little wall here that is blocking our spheres. When I render that frame, you'll see what that contributes. What you're seeing here is that the light is hitting this wall and casting a shadow onto our two spheres. However, because the settings on our spotlight, the ray depth limit is only set to one, what that means is the shadow rays coming out of our spotlight are hitting this wall and not going beyond that. So the number that you enter into your ray depth limit is the number of bounces that your shadows will actually calculate. So because this is set to one, the shadows are only calculating the first object that they hit and it is not contributing to these shadows that would show up in our reflections. If I increase that ray depth limit to two, what it will do is calculate the primary surface of the wall, but also calculate the secondary bounces of those shadows in the reflected object. So I'll render that so we can see what that looks like. And here you can see that the shadows are now being added to the calculation for the secondary ray bounces in our ray tracing shadows. And if I compare that to our previous render, here's a setting of one is only calculating the primary shadow ray and the setting of two is also calculating the reflections in our shadows. So I'll just show you a couple of other settings that you can use to control your ray trace shadows. I'm gonna turn off this shadow casting object again. And I'm gonna come in here to select one of these objects and make that object transparent. So I'll come up to my rendering editor and open up the hypershade. And if I double click the shader for that object, I can open up its attributes over here. And I'm going to change the transparency on that to be 100% uh, transparent. And now that I've done that, uh, you can see it's invisible here in my perspective view. I can render that frame and show you what that looks like. And here in this render, you can see that the object is now transparent, but we're still getting some specular highlights and reflections in the surface. If I'd like to have this object render more like a piece of glass where we would get a bending effect on the light rays similar to a magnifying glass, what I can do is add refractions to this object. So I'll show you how we can do that now. I'll close this out. And what I'm gonna do is open up the Hypershade Editor and I'll double click on that object to open it up in the Attribute Editor. And I'll come down here to Ray Trace Options. I'm going to click on Refractions to enable that. Now that refractions are enabled, it is the refractive index that controls the amount of light bending that you'll see in that object. And the refractive index is a measurement of how much the light bends when it hits a specific kind of surface property. So for example, there's a website here called robinwood.com, and on that website they've got a listing of the refractive index of different objects. So if I scroll down here, you can see they've got some gemstones and metals, and some common transparent materials. So for example, if I wanted glass, I would type in a setting of 1.474. So I'll type that in here now. I'll switch back to Maya and type in 1.474. And now that I've entered that, I can render this frame again and we'll see what that looks like. And now you can see it looks more like a marble or a magnifying glass because those light rays are being bent similar to the way it would behave in the real world. And then the last thing I'll show you is how we can start to get some color in our shadows when we render through transparent objects that have color in them. So I'll close this window out and I'm gonna come back here to my hypershade and double click the attribute editor for the shader that's assigned to that geometry. And I'll scroll back up here to my transparency settings. And if I add color to the transparency, you can see now that that transparent shader is now tinted to the red color. We can come up here and render that and see what that looks like. And now you can see because I've added that red tint to the transparency, not only are we getting a red tint to our glass material, but we're also getting a red shadow as the light rays pass through that transparent object. So that's a nice realistic effect that you get when you use transparency in ray trace shadows. Those are just some of the settings you can use to control the quality you get when you use ray trace shadows in Maya.